every Sunday thousands of people to the large church auditoriums and listen to pastors wearing Armani suits and diamond encrusted watches tell them that God wants them to be healthy and wealthy and have lots of money and that if they're in God's blessing they'll have these things. They make catchphrases like God can change your financial situation today if he so chose. But is this type of preaching right? Is this type of preaching even biblical? Uh, many of the leading pastors of today, men like Charles Stanley, Mark Driscoll, John MacArthur, John Piper, have given sermons, television specials, and even devoted chapters and books to what they call deception. And according to Charles Stanley, preaching that's totally unbiblical. John Piper in his book let the nations be glad actually says, I do not want prosperity preachers to stop calling people to maximum joy. On the contrary, I appeal to them to stop encouraging people to seek their joy in material things. John MacArthur in a blog is even a little bit more critical when he says, someone needs to say this plainly, faith healers and health and wealth preachers who dominate religious television are shameless frauds. Their message is not the true gospel of Jesus Christ. There's nothing spiritual or miraculous about their on-stage chicanery. It is all a devious ruse designed to take advantage of desperate people. They are not godly ministers, but greedy imposters who corrupt the word of God for money's sake. Our strongest support, though, is when we turn to the Bible. We see in certain passages, Mark 12, 41 through 44, Revelation 21, 21, and Proverbs 38, through nine. The doctrine of the prosperity gospel is deceptive and unbiblical. It leads people to value material wealth over faith. And it allows congregants to believe that if they are sick or if they are poor, that they are logically not in God's blessings. What we see in these passages are three things. We see that there's no value on money in heaven that God has a greater plan for all of us than achieving material wealth. And that the effort and the goal in Prosperity Gospel leads people down meaningless lives of constantly trying to achieve wealth. In Mark 12, Jesus is sitting with his disciples and he's watching these wealthy men pour just hordes and hordes of money into the temple treasury. And along comes a poor widow with no husband to take care of her and no son. And she has two pennies. And it's all that she has. And Jesus tells them, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. And what does he do to show how pleased he is? He doesn't do anything. Why doesn't he? If, if anyone deserved to be blessed, surely it's this widow. And he, Jesus feeds the 5,000, he feeds the 4,000, he raises people from the dead, he heals the blind, he heals the sick. Couldn't he create wealth for this woman who deserved it? Did he not care about her? Of course he cared about her. But he was looking to the eternal. And surely this woman, as we know now, is with God in, eternal, in, the, in eternal paradise. And just, just imagine what she's experiencing right now in heaven. It doesn't even compare to what she dealt with on this earth. As a matter of fact, when you look at the miracles of Jesus, there's not a single moment in Scripture that he creates wealth and gives wealth to someone as a miracle. Another point is in Revelation. Revelation 21, 21, where we see the streets are made with gold. The first thought is to say, well, wow, the streets are made with gold. Heaven must be really, really nice. But then we have to look at our own roads here on earth. Our roads are made of asphalt. They're made of dirt and gravel. We drive our cars on them. They're covered in tire marks and oil spills and litter. The roads of Jesus' time were, were ridden on by horses. and They were covered in, in urine and feces. So God isn't showing us that the roads are nice showing us how worthless gold is 
that he lines the streets of heaven with it. And one of the clearest cut pieces of scripture is Proverbs 30, verses 8 through 9. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me only my daily bread. Otherwise I may have too much and disown you and say who is the Lord. Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. The scripture really doesn't even need explaining. The author was very clear on what scripture says about money. So really it's time to stop allowing this unbiblical gospel to continue plaguing and deceiving people around the world. And just like when we were little kids, our parents would tell us, just ignore them and they'll go away. Stop buying the books. Stop attending the services. Stop watching the video. Stop buying the get-rich-quick propaganda. And just as a parasite feeds on blood, the prosperity gospel feeds on money. Some people have even gone so far as to involve the government to investigate their tax records and their handling of their money. But basically what it boils down to is if enough people can say, that's enough, this is not the gospel of Jesus Christ, eventually this will slowly fade and die. Thank you.